Yeah, the COP's case at its highest relies on one pillar. It believes Ms. Khan's evidence that she had been told to take a lie to the grave. This belief rests on an uncorroborated piece of evidence, a WhatsApp text originating from Ms. Khan herself. The COP deems the fact of its contemporaneousness to be critical in coming to its conclusion. The COP does not question Ms. Khan's credibility, even though she was the one who lied in this house by her own admission, and even though she also lied when she first communicated with me about the matter. So if contemporaneous evidence is indeed central, one would expect the COP report to exhibit a fidelity to such evidence, but it does not. For example, at para 93 of the report, it makes the case that Ms. Lowe was surprised the disciplinary panel was set up, and it advances Mr. Nardin's view that the DP was self-serving. However, what were Ms. Lowe and Mr. Nardin's contemporaneous views on the DP when it was set up? I submitted my WhatsApp text with both of them to the COP, once again, this evidence is left out from the COP report. For the record, Ms. Lowe's contemporaneous reply upon receiving my message was, and I quote, I see. Is there something you need me to do? Unquote. Mr. Nathan's reply was clearer, and I quote, Hi, Pritam. Noted on this, I know it's difficult, but I think party members and supporters will be comforted by it. Unquote. These contemporaneous WhatsApp messages directly contradict the COP's findings at Para 93. This leaves me to consider Ms. Khan's behaviour after her resignation and her motivations for making her uncorroborated claim at the COP that she was told to take her lie to the grave. I would offer that the more natural explanation as to why she would do so that is in line is that it was in line with human behaviour, logic and common sense to use the words of the COP. Her post-resignation behaviour was natural in the arena of political participation. When our first Prime Minister executed the transfer of power from the 1G to 2G leadership, according to five-time PAP MP for Wampo, Mr. Augustin Tan, there was a lot of strain, tension and resentment when older MPs and ministers were told to step aside for the 2G PAP. In response, one outgoing minister even spoke against the candidature of PM Lee at the 1984 elections. Such was the level of disenchantment. The comparison with Ms. Khan's behaviour and testimony at the COP is apt because not everyone reacts with loyalty to their party or their party leaders when they realise that the curtain is coming down on them or their political careers. How did To Chin Chai, former Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the PAP, react when he was pushed to the backbench? He became a vocal critic of PAP policies and famously said, how can I remain a dumb cow? As to the handover of power, he said, and I quote, for all party members who had been loyal, it was a painful process. You don't repay their loyalty by throwing them out. We had the responsibility to help them find jobs, unquote. In fact, so serious was the concern of the unhappiness among some members of the PAP Old Guard about political renewal that then Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew as Secretary General of the PAP suggested to his Assistant Secretary General Go Chok Tong to pack new cadre members into the People's Action Party in case the question of succession and renewal came to the fore at the next PAP party conference. So for the record, there are no jobs for the boys or girls for ex-Workers' Party MPs. When your departure is precipitated by an overwhelming loss of support from your party members and colleagues, except for your closest allies, from a human behaviour standpoint, I can understand why a person would turn against one's party leaders. My final point, Mr Speaker, is on the legitimate questions raised by Singaporeans about candidate selection in the Workers' Party. As this House knows, and as the government has also previously shared, for example, when the chief of the Singapore Civil Defence Force was convicted in court, no selection process is foolproof and people can change. Even PAP MPs have been found guilty of criminal conduct or forced by their party to vacate their seats for other reasons. Potential PAP general election candidates have also been substituted at the 11th hour. The point is that even people who exhibit politically attractive character traits 
can turn out to be unsuitable. The Workers' Party also has had its fair share of the same experience. It can be very difficult, if not impossible, to test a person's judgment in all circumstances prior to fielding them as political candidates. This is so even for the PAP with its massive resources and far greater ease in finding willing candidates compared to opposition parties. However, the Workers' Party does not use these realities as an excuse. In the main, our candidate selection processes can always be better in spite of the extraordinary circumstances and the political culture of a one-party dominant state. I will confer with my colleagues with a view to fine-tune the processes in the Workers' Party as best we can taking into account the structural challenges we in the opposition face. This would include the absolutely legitimate demands of Singaporeans that the Workers' Party feels individuals who do not lower the esteem of Parliament or who do not meet the standards expected of members of Parliament. Of course, I will endeavour to the best of my abilities to ensure that our candidates are rational, responsible and respectable. And if any candidate selection decisions are wrong, I, as Secretary General of the party, take full responsibility. In conclusion, with reference to the Leader of the House's first motion at 2C, the Workers' Party disagrees with the reasons behind the lower quantum of fine for Ms. Khan because it is predicated on alleged guidance given to her by myself, Mr. Ms. Lim, and Mr. Faisal, a case which the three of us reject. On the second motion, I am unable to accept the COP's finding, findings that offences have been committed under the Parliament Act by me or any other Workers' Party MPs. Therefore, I will object to the second motion as the basis for the recommendations are that offences may have been committed by us. Nevertheless, should Parliament resolve to adopt the motion, I intend to clear my name and will cooperate fully with the Public Prosecutor. <laughs>